Good morning. Good morning, church. We would like to welcome you here on this Sunday morning. Happy Father's Day to the fathers in the room. Um, I'm going to open up with prayer, and then we'll be getting into our big three. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this chance to come together and worship you, God. We ask that our worship would be fulfilling to you, Father. We pray that um, your spirit would be here, present amongst us in a new and refreshing way today that we can carry up through this week. In this all in Jesus' name. Happy Father's Day, City Church Greenfield. It's time for our big three announcements of the week. First up, we need some donations for our arts camp coming up this week. We have over 20 kids signed up and many of their families have not been inside our church walls yet. If you'd like to donate towards craft supplies, snacks, and everything else it takes to make a successful experience for these kids, please note Arts Camp on your checks or online giving. Use the On Mission tab and see Brooke Lettingham for more specifics. And next, speaking of Arts Camp, don't forget about our really special Sunday next week. We're going to have an amazing art show and recital from our kids from Arts Camp. After the recital, enjoy bounce houses, water slides, and Kona ice for the whole family. It's the perfect opportunity to invite new families to our church and show them what City Church Greenfield is all about. And finally, we're having a big church garage sale on June 29th in the main church building from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we're starting to set up this Wednesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. in the main church building. We'd love to see you there. See Josiah Bradbury for more details. Okay, that's it. Thank you for connecting, growing, and sharing with us here at City Church Greenfield. Now, let's get ready to worship. Let's stand and worship our Heavenly Father. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the Good, good father, it's who you are. 
Father's Day, and to some of you, your fathers are not here, and I trust that you will uh, be able to reach out to them, and some of you, maybe your fathers are no longer with us, and I hope that you are able to reflect on that. I know a lot of times when we get around Father's Day, Mother's Day, there's, uh, there's split feelings. Some people have not had good earthly fathers or mothers. And sometimes the thoughts that come back are not real uh, enjoyable moments. We have a heavenly father and that he is a good, good father. And um, I like that song. It doesn't just say he's a good father. He's a good, good father. And, um, and so may we take solace maybe you say solace <laughs> I say tomatoes I don't know what you say but I say solace maybe you take solace in in uh, in the fact that God loves you no matter what the earthly relationships that we had with our parents with our siblings God's love far outweighs it's an eternal love. It's not a temporal love. And I hope that uh, that will bring you great joy in your heart today. Um, a couple things. One, it's good to have Pastor Jason back with us. And he was in Florida. His father was in a bad accident last week. and uh, Or now more than a week ago. And um, was in the hospital and is... Uh, is he trying to recover? I'm not sure. Is he trying to recover? I'm not really sure. But anyway, he's messed up. <laughs> and uh, so we need to pray for his father and his mother and all that. That's because you know when your 84 year old father is all banged up, that's different than your you know younger guy trying to recover. And so let's pray for his father, Larry. Also, Debbie, uh, who is faithful here. Her father-in-law, an elder, he's in his 90s, and they had to rush him to the emergency room this morning. So those are two fathers that need our prayer today and the families that are surrounding them. And so we'll do that in a moment. A couple things. One, I want to thank everyone who showed up yesterday for our Connect party in uh, uh, the end of the year celebrating our Connect groups. And we had a great time last night. Great weather, great food, a lot of fun. Um, kids were just off the chain, um, had a lot of fun, and uh, some of them had to be wakened this morning so that they could come to church. That's it. See if you bring your kids to our backyard, we'll run them to death, and then you can sleep in in the mornings. Okay? Um, so anyway, thank you for that. That was a great end of our, our semester of... Uh, our connect groups look forward to the next semester lies ahead um, you saw about the yard sale and um, we haven't really talked a lot about this uh, Josiah and I we we brought Josiah on as an intern to run our yard sale and, um, so, <laughs> so anyway um, but we talked about if you have really good items that you want to donate. They have to be like good, okay? We don't want like a box of used underwear or something like that, okay? But if you have like a, um, a, a really good item that you were thinking of getting rid of that we could sell in the yard sale, we would love to receive that and put it in among the things that we're going to sell. All the proceeds to that is going for the building, okay? To help us to be able to continue to work and get work done over there, okay? So um, we're going to have to raise a lot more than what a yard sale will bring, but that will help us. That will keep uh, uh, And uh, we have a lot of stuff that was donated by World Vision that we're going to sell. There's a whole bunch of it over there. And, um, and so we would love to include your things, okay? So with that said, those of you who are uh, been supporting, we want to thank you for your faithfulness and giving. There's three ways that you can give. Um, we haven't figured out how to give like through mental telepathy yet. When we do that, we'll let you know, okay? But these are the three ways. 
And um, so we're just grateful for your giving. And may you continue to be blessed as you bless the kingdom work that we're doing. Let's pray. And then Pastor Jason is going to come. And he's going to bring us the next core value that we at City Church uh, have form to help us to know how to answer God's call that he's called us to do here. Father, we thank you for your incredible grace. We thank you that you have reached down and touched our lives. How deep, how deep the Father's love for us. We thank you, Lord, for that reality in our lives. We also thank you for your mercy, and we pray that you would be with Larry Lettingham in Florida today and, and his wife Jean, and help them be with their daughter that's there now uh, and trying to help. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, you'd bring healing um, in many ways there. We ask, Lord, that you would be with Debbie and her husband and uh, his father as they have gone to the emergency room this morning. Lord, we just pray for them. We give them strength. And uh, we don't know the details but Lord, we committed to you. Bless us now. May we have ears to hear the word. May we have hearts that are receptive and that will not only uh, receive what we have heard today, but that we will carry it out. In Jesus' name we pray. So for our summer series, we, as Pastor John said, we were doing our core values. Before we launched, we met together. Some of you were there, some of you were not, which is a really cool thing that uh, we are actually growing. Uh, but we had a group of people, we started with six, um, then it was like 12, uh, and then we had about, I don't know, 15 or so, and we started meeting weekly or uh, every other week uh, before we led up to our launch. And what, long, a lot of times what we did is we sat in circles and we brainstormed and I used the whiteboard a lot. And if you were there, you know that I two things I can't spell very well without spell check. And my handwriting is like chicken scratch. So we're going to go old school and I'm going to use the whiteboard and I have a couple scriptures that I put in late last night that we'll use at the very end. Most of it's going to be on your, your handout uh, and your thing to take notes on. Those are uh, you know, we've already killed the tree, so you might as well take the notes and use them to help you remember. And I, I forgot the statistic, but if you write something down, you're like a whole bunch more likely to actually follow through with what you write down. It helps you remember, it keeps you accountable. So I want to encourage you to take notes, if not on you know on your phone, write it, write something down, and then make something that we talk about applicable to your day-to-day -day life or you're just kind of hearing a, a good pep rally speech and that's not what we're here to do. We're not here to meet, right? We're here to be inspired by the Word of God and then go out and live it out. And that's what our core value is. That's what we're talking about at our core. It's, it's the DNA that makes up our church. And what we're going to do throughout the summer is as Josiah is going to teach and Joshua has been teaching, Joshua started off uh, two weeks ago with one of our core values, which was to instill hope that if we love Jesus, you know, we should tell our face, you know, that we should instill hope to other people that are, are hurting and they're in a dark place and there is um, just sin and awful things in the world and we are to be the salt and the light to the people in those dark areas. And so one of our core values is to instill hope. Pastor John spoke about narrowing our focus. I did not see the video yet, um, but I was very thankful that he was able to fill in. And actually, he was going to preach today, and I was going to preach next week, so he was awesome to switch with me. And hopefully, he talked about why we can't do everything and why we have to narrow our focus and what we're doing as God is calling us to step into his great commission. Today, we're going to talk about one of our core values, which is called multiplying ourselves. We multiply ourselves. Uh, we, When we first started it, we used the words re replace ourselves. 
Uh, and we should replace ourselves, but then it kind of is like, well, uh, you know, you're replaced, you're done, you're old, you're out, uh, and that kind of gave a bad, so we wordsmithed it around to say we multiply ourselves. And the whole series, what we're going to talk about is how we, as an organization, as a church body, were to multiply, but also in our homes, how do we help our families not to physically multiply, which is part of it, uh, you know, we... Brooke and I took that scripture, be fruitful, multiply. We believed in that. Uh, and so we actually had children. But as a church body, you also can have spiritual children that we're raising and multiplying your influence. For example, that our arts camp that's happening this week that we mentioned a few times today. That's a good chance for us for, what's that, seven hours that we're going to be able to be with these kids uh, and to... Uh, spiritually guide them, direct them as we're making arts and crafts. There's two devotional times. And then we're hoping their families will come back on Sunday to see their artwork that they're going to display and a little recital that we're going to do. Uh, and we'll have a, a, a abbreviated church service, which is going to be a lot of fun. And then we're going to go outside and do water slides and Kona ice. And it's going to be a lot of fun. The whole idea of that is not just to go get an icy. Right? It's to bring people in from the community into the church so they might be exposed to the kingdom of Jesus. Right, That's why we're doing all this. So that we can pour in these kids. You know, They might not come to Jesus that day. Their parents might not come to church ever uh, in Greenfield. But they, they might move away. And their kids, kids, kids can be impacted for eternity because we're spending a few hours with them multiplying our efforts, multiplying ourselves. On during that time. Does that make sense? That's what that we do. And then the final thing we want to talk about, not just as a church and as a family, but as individuals in our hearts, one-on-one -on -one with God. How are we multiplying what God is doing in us and through us? And if we don't do that, then we're not living out the full mission that Christ has given us. If you're a Christ follower, if you're not, and you're just here asking questions, or you're watching online, and you're trying to figure out this whole Jesus thing, man, you are in a great space. Please keep coming back. Keep asking those questions. But if you are a Christ follower, then I want you to lean into this message and really make this stick. This is a this is a core value. This is part of our DNA. This is who, this is who we are. This is what we do. We've said this from day one. There are a lot of great buses. We use the metaphor for our bus for church. There's a lot of great buses going to heaven. Okay? A lot of great churches that are doing great things. And you, you don't have to ride our bus. We, we'd love for you to be on our bus. We want you to find the right place on our bus. But you don't have to ride our bus to get to heaven. But if you're going to be on our bus, we are going to be on mission to make a kingdom impact. Amen! Amen. Yeah, that's a good thing. A pastor says when they're you know, kind of think, what, what am I going to say next? Let me say amen. So, no, it's to get them to, 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 to engage. Say yes. Amen means so be it. Let's make it, let's, let's, let's make it happen. So we are going to be a church that is doing mission work locally and globally in order to be sent out to make a kingdom impact. Your first point to ponder in your handout is to be part of a decide today to be a part of a movement and not a meeting. I don't like meetings. I'll be very honest with you. I, meetings are like one of my pet peeves. I don't mind team building. I don't mind strategy sessions. I don't mind uh, getting our ducks in a row. Like That's great. But man, John and I talk about this all the time. If we have to meet twice for the same thing, I would rather get two root canals. Like I don't like doing <laughs> the dentist at all. But I don't want to meet. If we've met for an hour, hour and a half, and then we come back next week, and we meet again for the same thing. You guys ever do that in your own work? You're like, did we not just talk about this thing again? Yeah, we got it. No, this in the break room. We shouldn't bring this. Okay, we got it. Right, don't eat my food in the fridge right now. We've already talked about this stuff. It drives me crazy. Same thing in the church world. If we meet about something, let's discuss solutions and then let's move on. Let's ready, fire, aim. And then we can come back to the meeting and evaluate. I'm fine with that. But I don't want to meet just a meet. And I don't want our church to just be a meeting place. It's fun. You know, we had a picnic yesterday. That was awesome. It's fun to come to church and hear songs and, and, and talk and catch up. But that, if church is not just a meeting where you come and drink your Jesus juice and then you go home and nothing's different. Right? The church is a movement. The early, I, you might have seen this before. I, I've shared this before, but some of you missed it. Um, in the year 100, okay, 100, I'm going to use AD. I like AD better than CD. In the year 100, there were, there were 25,000 believers. 
Oh my goodness, I before E except after C. Uh, believers, did I get that right? Um, you see how light I put that just in case I didn't? No, I wasn't, that, was not, that was not a purpose. 25,000 believers. How many believers did they start with? 12, right? Then there was um, church politics, and they got down to 11. <laughs> you got a little bad. I mean, the guy, you know, killed himself. It was bad. Um, I've been in some church meetings where it, it's bad. People, I've seen people get upset. I've seen people get a uh, red face at me. I've seen people pound their fist on the table like this. And like, it had to be physically restrained in a church meeting. Oh my goodness, we are so far off the, the boat if we are if we were getting each other's faces over that. And it wasn't about like, we need to win more people for Jesus. That, that's not what it was about. It was like a color of a wall. Uh, someplace like it's very sad so they had some church politics and they were down to 11 they got 12 and then there were 72 then there was a hundred and three hundred and then 70 years after the resurrection and cruci the crucifixion the resurrection it was in that order crucifixion first and then the resurrection of Jesus 70 some years later there were 25,000 believers now there are churches in America that have 25,000 believers we were Five minutes away from one in Florida uh, with Christ Fellowship. They were a huge mega church. Uh, they had, I think they had like 40,000 people. But in 200 years, 300 CE, how many believers were there? Anybody want to guess? Not in the first service. Don't you already know the answer. Anybody want to guess? There were 30 million. 30 million in 200 years. So America's not even. 200, America is over 200 years old, so around the, roughly the, the age of America, there were exponential growth from 25,000 to 30 million. Why? The Spirit was poured out upon the early church, and they went out, and they met in homes, and they spread the gospel message. They were on fire for Jesus, and there was exponential growth. No matter the size of anything, if, the, if you have the right DNA, no matter how small the seed is, if you have the right DNA with all the right stuff, the nutrients, the soil, the water, the sun, all things that you need for a, a, for a plant to grow, if the DNA is good and healthy, it will exponentially grow. We are a church plant. If we do all the, it doesn't matter how small we are, if we do the right things at the right time with God's help, giving us the things that we need, we will grow. Not to, to grow city church, but to grow the impact of the kingdom of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Like that's what we're here about. Not just to meet. Okay. We're here to be a part of a movement. We want to see this kind of growth, this exponential growth, and this can happen here. Okay, and it starts at City Church, it starts in your home, and it starts really right here in your heart. Can you decide to multiply? The big idea of today is what we're going to do at the very end is what is your PMC? And that stands for your personal multiplication where's my eraser? Capacity. Personal multiplication capacity. Now that's a, just a fancy word, it sounds corporate, but it's just a way to remember that we are supposed to <coughs> multiply, that we're supposed to be on mission every single day. And I'm going to give you this little graph at the end. I'm going to do some other stuff first uh, to help you remember uh, what it is that we're supposed to be doing. And it, this, this, this is a score that you can give yourself, uh, and it's going to fluctuate. It's not going to stay the same. And it's not for you to hold up and go, look at me, I'm higher if i got a 24. Um, and uh, oh, Josiah's got a 2. You know, i got a 68. It's not about comparing. If you want to share it with your spouse for accountability, that's fine. But it's between you and God to say, okay, I want to see my personal multiplication capacity go up and to the right. You guys seen those seen graphs where they get it? the growth is measured, there's loops and goes ups and down. But you want to go up and to the right. So before we get any further, let me ask you, don't answer out loud, how are you doing with multiplying what Jesus is doing for you? Who are you pouring into? Who's pouring into you? And who are you pouring into? If you're a disciple, you are automatically commanded to make other disciples. We're supposed to, in the church world, we, here's, here's the, you might have seen this too, um, we have for decades been in a mindset of addition. Uh, I should have done that down here. This is subtraction, this is maintaining, this is addition, this is multiplication. 
For decades in the church world, we have been stuck in this idea of addition, 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 add people. We call it, in the church world, we say budgets, buildings, and butts. Okay, butts in the seats, budgets, dollars in the bank account, and a bigger building. And that, to me, uh, seems to be like that is the, the prevalent thing in church world is it's all about adding. Okay, adding, adding, adding. Can we get more money? Can we have more people? Can we have a bigger building? And churches lose their focus. They lose their mission when they're solely focused on just adding people. Uh, a churchy word is we call it the attractional model, where we're trying to have the biggest show on earth, right? Uh, and we get these people to come in for the show. And then when the show doesn't get, loses its showiness, then they move on to the next show. And to the next show, and this is where we get these people that are church hopping. You know, it's fine to search for a church. Um, that's totally, totally fine. But people are addicted in our culture to being entertained. That's why I mentioned the Jesus juice. We just want to come in, punch our Jesus time card, drink our Jesus juice. That's not to be mixed up with communion. I'm not talking about that. Um, it's our, our spiritual time for the one hour on Sunday or whenever we go to church. And then the rest of our week is not impacted at all. But that's not what the early church did. They were living it out day in and day out. And that's what we're called to do, to multiply what God is doing for us. It's not just about adding. A level one church is dying. Okay, they're subtracting. Okay, you don't want to get in that church that you know, they're on their way out. They're they're dead. They don't even know it. A level two church is a lot of churches in America. We're just maintaining, hanging on. Level three is adding. Adding is better than subtracting. But the idea is to get to be a multiplying church. This is where we're planting other churches. Level five is a church that's planting churches that are planting churches. They're becoming grandparent churches. Does that make sense? So you follow me? And there are magnets. I'll change colors. There are magnets at the ends. Uh, and these, you know, it's just a model to help us kind of visualize what's going on. There's magnets all along this way that if, once you're maintaining, there's a magnet that you start just dropping people and losing people until you're, until you're dead. And if you get past addition to multiplication, there's also a magnet that draws us back because we're like, man, hey, we're starting to grow here. Now, what can we do to get more people, more people, more people, more people? Add, add, add. And our focus gets lost from sending people out in mission and planting churches where there are no churches, and we lose the focus because we begin to build this empire. And we're not called to a meeting, and we're not called to build an empire. We're here to make a kingdom impact. I'm going to say that over and over again. We're called to multiply. But as we, as we multiply, this magnet draws us back to what every other church is trying to do, which is just add. Now, here's the hard part. You have to add in order to multiply, right? Because one times one is just one. So if you're going to multiply, there's a tension between this. When you do multiply, you're going to add people, but you've got to keep the focus of multiplication, not just adding people to add people. Because when you add people, your focus begins to be about funds and building a bigger building and having more people come. And those are all important Right? We need that. We need a, a, a place to meet. We need a place to worship God in a great environment that people are going to feel welcome to come to. We need people to actually come. We need budget dollars to make that happen. That's super important. But that's not the main focus. And a lot of people, when you ask them if they're hesitant to come to church, you'll hear this excuse a lot. They'll say, oh, it's all about the money. Well, you can say, well, in our church, our ball pastor said our core value is multiplying. It's not about your money. We don't need your money. God wants your heart. And we just know that sometimes that we compete with that because God wants our hearts, but our heart belongs to our checking account. And so sometimes we battle that, but that's another sermon for another day. We are about multiplying our kingdom impact. All right? We don't want to be a level three church. We want to go to level four, level five, where we're planting churches. We joked about Josiah coming in as an intern to do the garage sale. That's true. Uh, it's going to be awesome. But our his main reason for being here is that someday soon, within less than a year, him and his wife Jocelyn are going to be uh, starting a brand new church, re revitalizing a church that's been it's been shut down. That one, at least one, at least one in there. It's been it's, it's dying or maintaining, and they're going to redo it. And so we're going to pour into him and Jocelyn as much as we can in the months that we have them. But at some point, though, we're going to send him out, send him and his wife out to be ambassadors of City Church, and more importantly, of Jesus. We're multiplying our efforts. We're not wasting with people like, why would you waste time? This guy's going to be gone in six months, seven months, eight months. It's not a waste of time. 
It's kingdom impact time. We're multiplying. So we're, we're working them hard. We're making them, it's your second week. Do the beginning. Do the welcome. Uh, you know, he had it last week, and he's going to be preaching twice. He's going to be preaching the same week as the yard sale. And that was on purpose. Uh, we thought about that. We thought, man, that's going to be a hard week to do the yard sale. And he's got to preach. Well, guess what? I have to preach every single week. Uh, and when you're by yourself, you're going to have to preach, you know, every single week. And you're going to have yard sales, and you're going to have uh, arts camp, and you're still going to have to preach. So that was on purpose. Um, to, <laughs> to, and I didn't want to do it. Uh, no, that's not, that's, not, that's not true. That's not true. We're trying to multiply our impact with him. Who are you pouring into? It's so important. So, first of all, someone better be pouring into you, but you've got to be pouring out into someone else, or we're not going to have exponential growth. We're just going to be adding, and it's going to go real slow, and nothing's going to happen. Um, because, you know, the base <coughs> word of mission, the M I S S, is the same root of the word missile. We're supposed to be launched missiles, not to blow people up, you know. Uh, but if they're sitting in their life, sure, maybe, but not to go in as a heavy handed missile, but to, as a missile is launched, you know, a pilot of a plane doesn't push the launch button, the missile just goes, eh, I better come, to, I better stay on the plane a little longer, I better hang out a little more, get, 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 get my Jesus to no! launch! You know, the button is pushed. And we're supposed to be sent like missiles for Jesus. And you're supposed to be a missile that launches other missiles. That launches other missiles against what? The enemy. The devil. The darkness. We're missiles for Jesus. That's a good t-shirt. Uh, we're supposed to be, that's probably not a good t-shirt because they're going to be like, what? Missile? That's awful. But you guys know what I'm trying to say. There, it is important that we are sent with that kind of ferocity. With that type of energy, with that type of focus, when a missile is launched, there is a target, there is a chip in that, that, that missile that tells exactly where it's going to go, and that's what we need to do. We are given orders from our commanding officer, Jesus, to go and make disciples. He did not say go and meet, go and hang out and sing a couple songs to me, and that's it. Those are important, but we're supposed to gather to scatter to go and make disciples be sent out as missions. Amen. Amen. All right. Number two, point upon number two. Would you begin to pray? I didn't say even the invite, but would you begin to pray about who you need to invest in? Who is God tapping you on the shoulder to say, that person, that's who you need to pour into? It may be your children in this season. That's okay. But it may be your children plus a neighbor, plus a coworker, plus someone at school. Plus someone, you fill in the blank on one of your kids' sports teams or your sports team, wherever you're at. If you pray that prayer, I promise God will put someone in your way. Write their name down. Do it right now. Like, don't, don't wait. Write down four names and then circle one. Uh, there's, there are people that you are going to be around, what I call your sphere of influence, that I'm never going to see. And it, it could be the least likely person. Here's a great story. So I coached baseball last year, assistant coach. Um, I couldn't commit to be a, uh, a head coach because it's too much of a commitment with church and everything, voice acting, all this going on. So I said, I'm going to be an assistant coach. And I, I, you know, I did a good job. I thought I was there for landing. Uh, I'm trying to talk to the other coaches, and I'm, I'm investing. And there was a guy on the team. The one of the dads, he was the one of the assistant coaches, and I'm talking to him as much as I can, and I just felt, all right, this is the guy. This is, this guy's going to come to our church. He's going to be part of our church. And we had a, a, a baseball party, and well, there were there were three coaches, another coach, and he met the other coach missed a lot. He had to travel for work. I didn't get to talk to him that often, uh, and so I thought, eh, it's not him. God doesn't want me. It's, it's, it's this guy. Um, and I I just got talked to him a lot, and uh, extra time, and extra text messages. And we had this baseball party, and I was talking, talking him up. And uh, guess who it was? <laughs> you want to guess who it was? It wasn't Hiram. Hiram was the guy that wasn't there all the time because he, he had to travel. And I thought, hey, God doesn't want me to talk to him. Uh, he doesn't, I talked to him. It was nice to him. But I was really trying to get Logan's dad to be a part of the church. I really thought that's who God was laying on my heart. Um, we had a baseball party, and Hiram goes, we're going on vacation, uh, but we're going to be here for the launch. <laughs> Seriously? And he's like, yeah, we're not. And they have they have barely missed a Sunday. Uh, he travels now too, and he came back so he can make sure he made a schedule so he can be. And he's been a, their, his family is a vital part. We would not be here without the Acostas. Um, God had a different plan. God had a different plan. I'm 
I'm glad he did. Um, but you never know who God's going to put in your way. And if I decided, you know, it would have been really easy for me to say, oh, man, church plan, voice acting, two kids, uh, you know, like, uh, fixing them out, uh, assistant coach baseball, pass. Like, that's, a, he's like hurting cats, especially in the rookie league, like that. Throw the ball! You know, it's just a lot, it's a lot of screaming and going nuts. But man, I'm so glad that I did, because we never would have met. And he's one of my best friends, and he's super competitive, and he beats me a lot of stuff, and keeps me humble. Uh, not beats me physically, but he beats me in like ping pong, which I'm really good at, and he's really good. He's better. Um, but I was ready for your cornhole yet. He missed the thing. I was ready for him. I was practicing, and I was ready to eat chicken out. Um, <laughs> you never know who God's going to put in your way. Pray. Write someone's name down. And then God might give you somebody else, but you never know. You never know. You, but you, if I decided not to do it, and then I'm never going to be around those people in order to do that. You've got to decide. Who are you? God's probably already got them in your life. They're probably already there. You just have to invest in their life. Pray about who to invest. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9.22, To the weak I became weak in order to win the weak. I have become all things to all people that I might be in every possible means save some. Now, as a church, we cannot be all things to all people. That's why we talked about narrowing our focus last week. Because if you try to target everybody, then you're going to get nobody. Right? It's going to absolutely not work. But in your life, individually, you, you do what you have to do, sort of sinning, to reach the lost. That's what Paul was talking about. He was saying he, he was from Jewish descent. He also had Roman citizenship. So when he's around the Romans, he flashed his Roman card. Ah, oh, Roman, Roman, I'm a Roman citizen. When he's with the people of Israel, he was a, he was a child of Israel. He was all that. He was a, a religious leader in the Jewish church. He did what he had to do. He said he had to be strong around the strong people, weak around the weak people. He did what he had to do to in order to invest in the people around him. Which means if you're only surrounded by Christians, then you're not able to reach the lost. So you've got to get in the way of other people. I saw a great post. I think Phil, Phil's our best Facebooker. Where's he? He's our me. You know, the guy, are you in your 60s, Phil? Yeah, I'll say, you're in your 60s, right? Yeah, I said, yeah. Oh, late, late 60s plus 10. Uh, his social media presence is amazing. He's inviting and inviting and inviting. He's doing, he's doing what he can on, on, online. What are you doing? You know, who are you inviting? Who are you talking to? He's out there doing it. And we have to do what we can, be around the sphere of influence that we have, in order to make a kingdom impact. So this is where this PMC comes in line. I think I have a graph in your handout, but I didn't have time to fill it in because I did it last night, I'm very honest. I was tired after winning the ball in uh, Cornwall. I lost once to Josh and Kirsten, I'll say it out loud. I lost to Kirsten. <laughs> So you want to put a 10, and a 0, a uh, 5, and a 5, okay? Uh, there's an x-axis. I told Landon when we get to like graphs, I'm done. You're, I'm, I can't help you anymore. Brooke said she's out with fractions come. So uh, he's going to need a lot of help in school. Uh, but I do know that the y-axis goes up and down, and the x-axis goes sideways. So you want to put 0 through 10, or you can do 5. That's not, that's not quite halfway, but you get the idea. Uh, 1 through 10 this way and 1 through 10 this way. This upper line, this, it, this Y line here, I'll change my color, is the empowered line. Empowered. So I can spell empowered. E-M-P-O-W-E-R-E-D? Empowered. Good. Okay, this is your empowered line. This is what we get from God. Okay? From the Holy Spirit. He gives us Power. Acts 1 8 says this. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. What does that verse mean? It's into your neighborhood, your region, your state, your nation, and the world. Like that's the, that's the idea. You will receive power. The same power that raised Jesus from the grave is available to us. And this is how you. This is just, again, this is for you. It's not for you to tell anybody else. This is for you to, to say, like, how am I doing feeling empowered by the Spirit? Am I doing the things? Am I being in the presence of God? Am I taking time out of my day, my week, 
Uh, right now, being part of this church, you're here, I'm preaching to the choir, you're absolutely, this is hopefully an empowering for you, that you're receiving a word from the Lord, that you're singing songs of praises to Him, we're praying together, you should be you feel empowered. But it's just an hour, an hour and a half of your, of your week, compared to all the other hours. What are you doing to spend time getting plugged in to the source, to feel empowered? Because if we don't have this, then it's going to be really hard to do this. This line is your empowering. Who are you empowering with what's being poured into you? You see, there's two hooks that we hang everything on in our church. And it could be true for your family and for your heart as well. Two hooks. Loving God and loving others. It comes from the, what the Hebrews call the Shema. They say it every single day. To love the Lord your God with all your, whole, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And Jesus says the second thing is to love others as you love yourself. What we call the golden rule. Loving God vertically. Loving others horizontally. How I remember that is the y-axis is going up. Um, it's like a child being asked to be picked up. Daddy picked me up. Daddy picked me up. My kids are so small enough where I get to do that. Um, even though if I'm tired, Landon's getting bigger. If he asks me to pick him up, I'm going to pick him up. Because I know one day, Father's Day, we'll start crying. I'm not going to be able to pick him up. He's not going to ask me to be picked up. He's, it's, there's going to be a time where it's just not going to happen anymore. So parents, pick your kids up when they ask you to be picked up. As the, on the y-axis, I'm going to be asking the Heavenly Father to pick me up vertically. Pick me up, Daddy. I'm also, he can also remember by asking the word letter Y, because my kids ask me why a thousand times a day. Why, Daddy? Why? I says, why? I says, why? Because I said so! Uh, is what it, the final answer it gets to, but that, that helps you remember this is, I'm supposed to be pouring, getting poured into by God through His Holy Spirit to feel powerful. You feel powerful? Or you feel weak? You feel spiritually like, yes, I can take on the enemy. Yes! I have enough reserve in my tank that I can go out there and make a difference for Jesus. You should feel powerful in Christ to go out to be empowering other people because a lot of people feel weak. They feel defeated they, because they are, right? And so our job is to love them and then love God and to love them. The X axis is easy to memorize because it's X is our symbol for multiplication, right? You want to multiply. X is also um, the, the Greek symbol for Christ. If people get upset, you've seen Xmas. Oh, they take the Christ out of Christmas. Well, actually, they're not. Xmas means Christmas. Uh, X means is the Greek letter for Christ. Uh, it's also Jesus' Jesus's arms on the cross. Uh, if you remember that, that he died for others. There's easy ways to remember that. Y, up to God. X, out to God. Are you being empowered? And are you empowering others? The third point to ponder is that multiplication starts with an invitation. Multiplication starts with an invitation. There was a stat from Barna that came out a few uh, years ago from a guy named Dr. Tom Rainer. He studies church, church growth and things like that. And this is, this is going to blow your mind if you've never heard this. It says, I'm going to read it so I don't mess it up. This is from the unchurched next to work. 82%, right? You want to write down 82. 82% of unchurched people are somewhat likely to attend church if someone would just invite them. 82. So that's more than 8 out of 10 people. There's 8 plus 0.2 of a person. Whatever that is. Maybe someone's pregnant. Uh, 0.2. 8.2 out of 10 people will come to church if they are asked. In, this, in the same chapter, the same book, uh, it said in the same year they did the studies that only 2% of people that come to church actually invited someone to church within that year. 2%. That means 98% of church people don't invite people to church. Now, I'm not saying, you know, that's not even asking them to, like, you know, know Jesus as their Savior, to walk them through a prayer, or to have a Bible study. That's just asking them to come to church. Start small. Remember? Small, healthy things grow. Same, same thing with ideologies. If one of your core values is you are going to be a multiplying kingdom impact person, it just starts with a simple invitation. Why? Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save the lost. To seek and save the lost. We've been talking about this for a few weeks now. 
Can we own the lostness around us? There are people around us in our sphere of influence that are going to spend eternity away from God. My father is you know, recovering. He nearly died. But I, we always have the, the self-assurance that if he would die, he's, it's not goodbye forever. That we're going to spend eternity in heaven with him. There are people that don't have that assurance. And then again, I'm never going to meet Pastor John's not going to meet Joshua. Joshua, They're, we're not we're not going to meet them. You will. You are your. You are the seed that will be planted in their life to make a kingdom impact that might affect their children and their children's children for eternity. You mentioned the arts camp. There are kids. There are 20 kids coming right now, maybe more. And there's seven families that have never walked inside of our church. And I know one family that's never been to church in their entire life. That is an amazing chance to multiply what Jesus is doing for us into their life. So absolutely be praying. Thank you for those who are volunteering for that. Um, that's a way to give back. How are you doing? So what you do is you measure 1 through 10. How filled with the Spirit do you feel? Do you feel God is pouring His blessing onto you? Do you feel God, are you, are you doing devotions? Are you praying? Are you doing spiritual disciplines? Grade yourself 1 through 10. And then, how are you doing with making disciples that make disciples? Are you pouring into them? Most church people do really well here, but are, they're failing here. And if you do really well here and you're a zero here, that's just social activism. That's just social justice, which is nothing wrong with it, but it's not in the name of Jesus. It's just the name of whatever your organization that you're working with. We want to help people, empower them for Jesus. Right? And so you take your number. If you're halfway here and halfway here, your score is 25. 5 times 5. You know, if you're a 1 and you're a 1, your score is 1. If you're a 10 and a 10, you're a 100. Jesus is probably the only 100, right? Um, he maybe John Wesley was like in, his, in the 80s. Maybe he was like a 9 and an 8. Maybe John Wesley would get a 72. But he was an awful husband. He should have never got married. I mean, the, 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 the things that you read about him, whoo! Um, he should have not got married. But... He was a great pastor, a great church planter, and he his his sermons and his scripture is all about loving God. He was filled with the Spirit. He was a great church worker. But it's we know that it's more than that, right? That we're supposed to love God. We love our families. We serve them. Who are you pouring into that's making a kingdom impact? God is going to lay somebody on your heart if you pray that prayer. Just be careful. You know, and I always tell people, like, well, I'm not really feeling God. I'm having a hard time in my prayer life. I feel like they're just kind of bouncing off the ceiling. I always say, pray this prayer. God, show someone uh, to me this week that you need me to show you to. Show, bring someone that I can invite to church. Put someone in my way that needs to know Jesus. He's going to answer that prayer every time. Keep praying that prayer. God's going to lay somebody in your heart. Say, man, I really should be, like, doing more. Now, you can you can pick, you can choose someone who's already in the church to disciple, to disciple more, but make sure that as you're doing that, that the mission is for them to make another disciple. And for them to make another disciple. You're not just addition. You're not just adding spiritual knowledge to them. You are discipling them so they can disciple someone else. Ask them, who are you now discipling? All you have to be is one page ahead of the person your disciple. The Holy Spirit will take care of the rest. You know the graph that I showed you about the church exponentially growing? As we were going, the church was going great. Uh, we got into the dark ages, started declining. John Wesley comes on the scene, and there's this, this movement that takes place in America and in England. Uh, they call them these Methodists. Um, they have these Bible studies and these class meetings, and they were doing this great work, and the church was growing. And then, all of a sudden, it stopped, and it's been in a kind of a state of decline ever since. You guys know what happened what, uh, when we started declining? Um, for sake of time, I'm just going to tell you. Uh, seminaries began. Christian education. Now, I, I have a master's degree. I think it's super important for leaders of leaders of leaders to get Christian education. Uh, super important. But that's not where a movement begins. It doesn't begin with the pastor, the clergy. It begins with well, the churchy word is the laity. The normal people, we're at normal, you're normal, that are going to make disciples who make disciples. When, when the church in America stopped doing that, 
and started putting all the emphasis on the pastor to make disciples, the pastor to win people for Jesus, the pastor and, and maybe the pastor's wife to do all the work. That's when it begins to fall apart. Scripture is very clear that we're all called to be ministers. You've received power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And indeed you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the ends of the earth. The band's going to come up. We're going to sing one more song as we look at the Great Commission. The Great Commission in Matthew is kind of the, the marching orders that God, Jesus, as when he was being, um, was being taken up into heaven, he gathered his guys around and he said, hey, I'm getting ready to go to the house. I'm paraphrasing. I'm getting ready to go up to the big house. But before I go, remember this. I need you to, to remember that all authority, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. He was empowered. He said, all the authority is mine. Now I'm going to give it to you to do what? To meet on Sundays from 10 to 11. What did he say? Go. Make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them. Empowering them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them. Empowering. To obey everything. Empowering. I have commanded you. And surely I am with you. You're empowered because I'm with you. So when you go to, to meet people this week, to pray with them, to talk with them, to invite them, the Holy Spirit is going to make you powerful. And you're going to go boldly in the name of Jesus and ask people to make a difference in their life because they're lost. And they're going to spend eternity away from God unless you go and be a missile. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray today as we have gathered today to, to not just hear words, but to be transformed. That we can be sent out as missiles for you, Lord Jesus, God. We pray today that we take to heart your message to make disciples. That make disciples that make disciples. Give us power in your Holy Spirit. Give us wisdom. Give us your grace. We pray this in your name. Amen.